hello friends welcome to my video today i'm going to talk about the concept of object pooling in c sharp in this video we'll learn what object pooling is what problem it solves and how to implement it in a c sharp program so before we get started just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you'll be notified every time i upload a new video okay without any further delay let's get started what is object pooling in C-Sharp? Object pooling is a technique by which we create a pool of objects and thus reducing the overhead of creating and managing the objects. Okay, why object pooling? Object pooling is required because it works as a performance booster where object creation and destruction are costly. Okay, let's understand it with the diagram shown over here. So, let's assume we have a pool of objects. The pool of object means that various initialized objects are available at the centralized location. And someone wants to use that object, how they can use that? They can simply call the acquire object method and get the initialized instance and perform some operation with it. Once object work is over, it is returned to the object pool by calling this release object method. So with object pooling concept, we don't need to create object again from the beginning because it has already been created and managed by the object pool. So when object is needed, we can simply call this acquire object method from the pool and do our work. There's no more overhead for creating and managing the objects. Right? So now you must be having a question in your mind. Is it really needed on every occasion? The answer is no. It is not needed on every occasion. So when to use object pooling? Object pooling can be used in three important scenarios. Number one, where object creation is expensive. So we must use object pooling when creating objects are costly. Number two, the rate of object creation is high. What does it mean is, if the frequency of creating further objects is also high, then we can use object pooling. Okay. Number three, the number of objects in use is small. Let's suppose in object pool, if number of objects are being used less than in hand objects in the pool, that means it is available to serve, then object pooling is a good choice. Okay, where Microsoft has implemented object pooling, one of the examples where Microsoft used the object pooling concept is system.threading.threadpool where they have implemented this object pooling concept. One thing we have to keep in mind whenever we are going ahead with this object pooling concept and when we return an object to the object pool, its state must be reset. So object pool responsibility is there that they need to reset the state of that particular object. Okay, now we understood theoretically what object pooling is, the best scenario where we can opt for object pooling in C sharp, right? So let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Now here we are in Visual Studio. I have created one console application named object pooling demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, we have three classes. The first class is the generic object pool class that has logic of acquire object and release object. Second class is my class whose object we create in object pool class and access it via the acquire object method. Third class is a program class that has main method which is an entry point of this application. Let's review object pool generic class first. In generic object pool class there are two private lists. One is in hand list and other is the in use list. So object pool has two types of list in hand list and in use list in hand list would contain the available object that can be acquired whereas in use has objects that is already acquired by someone and not available to use okay so in object pool logic revolves around these two lists okay so now there are two fields one is the counter whose data type is of int and it is initialized with the zero Second, max total objects in pool also belongs to the int data type category and it would contain number that object pool can have maximum objects. Okay, so these two fields are very very important that we are going to use in later point of time. Okay, now there is a private static object pool instance that is set initially as null. Now for getting the instance of object pool class, we have a static method named get instance that checks first whether is there any instance already created or not. If not, it creates an instance and return it. Otherwise, it returns the existing instance. So only one instance of the object pool class can exist. So it is just going to behave as a singleton class. Okay. Okay. Now there are two objects, acquire object and release object method. In acquire object method, first we check in hand dot count is not equal to zero and in hand count is less than 10. 
So if it is true, then it takes object from in hand list that is from the available list and changes status to being used by making an entry in the in use list. And that's what I have written in use dot add obj. And then we need to remove an entry from the in hand list. That's what I have written again here in hand dot remove at at the position of zero, right? And then finally, we are just changing the counter by decreasing the number by one, right? And finally, it returns the object to the caller. So that's what is happening at the if cache. If it is false, then it comes to the else loop. Here we have created a new instance of the type T. And then we are adding into the in use list. And finally, returning the object to the caller. So that's all the work acquire object method does. Now let's examine the release object. What release object does? It accepts object as a parameter that was returned to the pool. In this method, first we check whether counter is less than or equal to max total objects in pool or not. If it is, we add object back in the in hand list, that is the availability list. And then we increment the counter by one and remove that object from the in use list. Otherwise, we are just going to print the masses. If it is, if condition is not true, then it comes to the else block and then we are printing this statement, right? That means max total objects are reached in that particular availability list, right? So we cannot add this. Now let's review the second class, which is the my class. In this class, we have date time variable that is initialized with the current date time at the class level. And there is one method get class object creation time that returns date time at what time object of this class instantiated, right? And finally, we have program class that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. So here first we are printing demo one object pooling because we are just giving the demo of the object pooling. And then I am just going to get the object of the object pool generic class. And that's what I have written obj object pool my class dot get instance. So this get instance method will get called, which is listed in this object pool class. This method will get called. It will check first whether instance is null then it is just going to create a new object pool class object and then it is just going to return it. If it is not, then it is just going to send the existing object itself. And when we are sending the existing object, so this statement is going to get printed into this console window. So we will come to know, okay, whether the existing object returning from the pool or whether we have created the object in the object pool class and then returning. Okay, so based on this statement, we will come to know. And uh, after getting the instance, I'm calling this set max pool size and we are passing the 10 value to it. So what it will do, it will call this, yeah, this method will go, get called set max pool size in setting pool size where it is just setting this max total objects in pool is equal to 10 because the setting pool size we are receiving as the input parameter for this method as a 10. So this 10 value is going to get set for this particular variable that is the max total objects in pool okay so that's what this statement is doing over here and then i'm just writing this statement acquiring object from object pool first time so first time what will happen we are just going to call this acquire object method with the help of the object pool object obj pool right so that's what i have written my class obj is equal to obj pool dot acquire object so it will return the object of this my class that we are storing into this object variable of type my class right and then finally we are calling this get class object creation time method is written into this my class right if you see here this is the my class and we have this method get class object creation time right so this is the method we are calling with the help of object of this my class and that's what i have written over here so that Whatever the output that this method is going to return, it will get printed into this console window. And finally, we are calling this release object method and passing this object. This method will put back the objects into the availability list. And that's what this method is just going to get called, right? Release object. It is checking counter is less than equal to max total objects in pool. Then it is just going to add into this availability list, which is nothing but the in hand list where we have written this statement in hand dot add obj and counter plus plus and then we are removing from the in use list and that's what i have written in use dot remove obj right and if this condition is not true then basically there are more object in pool so we cannot add those things so that's what this console statement is just giving you hint that 
yeah we have called this release object but there is already objects are there so capacity is full so we cannot add it more right but this case won't happen most of the time because we have already check in place okay so this is the first time you know call we happen where we have acquired the object we have called the uh, my class object method and then finally we are returning by this calling this release object method right and then second time also i'm just going to acquire the object of this my class so for that i have written console dot right line acquiring object from object pool second time right and then my class obj2 is equal to obj pool dot acquire object and then finally we are printing the statement that we are returning from this method when we are calling this method obj2 dot get class object creation time that date time will get printed into this console window right and finally we are releasing object back to the object pool right so this method will do for us so now let me execute this and see the output okay so output got appear into this console window if you see here demo one object pooling got printed over here and then creating object in the object pool class and then returning acquiring object from object pool the first time the first time this way it got called first it just created the object pool class and then returning and then acquiring object from obg pool first time right and the second and this is the time that we are getting from where we are getting we are getting time from this my class where we have this date time variable created at right where we are taking this date time dot now and then we are returning via this method so this method will return here this uh, console dot right line obj dot get class object creation time and then it is just going to get printed over here so if you see timing 25 12 2022 18 first time object got created and the time is this one second time when we are acquiring object from object pool again then it is just going to acquire the object okay so this time if you see here acquiring object from object pool second time object creation time is the same what we have you know fetched for the first time so it means this object is not created again it is returning the existing object only and that's what we are getting this time as it is right so that's the beauty of the object pooling where we don't need to create and maintain the objects we just go and use that and return the object back to the pool that's it so now everything looks good but there is a problem here what is the problem let's suppose in concurrent environment where multiple thread is trying to access the method so that time it won't work right for that what we need to do is we need to put the lock in place and then we can you know modify this main method and see how it behaves so let me do it quickly for you okay so now what i have done over here i have just changed couple of things the first changes i have done over here i have just you know changed this console dot right line statement previously demo one was their object pooling now i have just modified this text over here demo two object pooling with thread and applying lock because i'm just going to show the demo with the help of thread and we have applied this lock also okay if you see here this is the thread we have created two tasks task one and task two in task one i have written task one dot run and then we are just calling this get instance method of this object pool class and then we are getting the object of the obj pool and then we are setting this set max pool size 10 and then finally we are calling this acquire object method to get the object of this my class right once we get this object of the my class that we are storing into this obj variable then we have just you know call this method of this my class get class object creation time which is written over here right so i have called this method so whatever the output that we are going to get it we are just going to print it over here and that's what i have written printing from first thread object creation time and this is the time date and time would get printed over here and then, and then finally i am just releasing this object right and that's what i have written obj pull dot release object obj and similar things i have done for the task 2 only only the difference is i have just you know changed this text over here 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 it was the first thread here i have written the second thread that's it there is no any other difference in task 1 and task 2 okay and here in in the object pool class what i have done i have applied this lock over here so i have applied lock in hand that's it and these things i kept as it is what it was earlier okay and then here also in acquire object i have applied this lock over here on in hand and finally in the release object also 
acquire object release of, release object also i have applied this lock that's it and there is no change at all so what will happen if multiple threads are trying to access you know particular object it will check whether that particular object is available or not in in hand list if it is available then it will be providing otherwise it will lock that particular resource for time being okay let me execute this and show the output to you okay so output got appear into this console window if you see here demo to object pooling with thread and applying lock that got printed right creating object in object pool class and then returning an existing object returning from the pool right so printing from second thread it got printed first printing from the first thread it got printed if you see the timing timing are both are the same and the first object creating object in object pool class and then returning first the object created in object pool class and then it is returning from the existing object itself so basically it talk about that object pooling is happening because the time is same right so basically it is referring to the same object itself and here if you see creating object in the object pool class and then returning an existing object returning from the pool so basically what it is happening over here see come here if you see here if instance creating object in obj pool class and this one so first time it created object and the second time when instance was not null then this printed this statement got printed existing object returning from the pool right because it is singleton class it is just object of that particular obj pool class can exist only once and that's what if it is there then it is just returning the existing object and that's what i got this statement printed over here so that's the demo of this object pooling with the thread and the applying lock now that brings me to end of my session to sum up in this video we learned what object pooling is what problem it solves how to implement it in a c sharp program right that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video